Hi, it's Ruta Goof Studio. Okay, so I thought I'd uh, do a voiceover for this one so I can give some tips and hints. Right, I've used Liquify tool here. Uh, I don't usually do this, so it's just uh, an experiment. I'm, I'm looking at uh, readjusting some of the shapes uh, to make sure that they're, they're correct. So I found that the shoulders were a little bit skew a little bit wrong. Uh, I also moved uh, the sh you know, the, the the clothing a little bit and also the the arms. Some some of these uh, uh, techniques I use on this video are experimental. Uh, don't be afraid to experiment while you're painting. Uh, always move outside your comfort zone. That's what the that's how you learn new techniques for your for your workflow. So I'm just uh, budging things up. The worst thing about Lookify tool. Uh, is you can't really see properly what your changes are until you've done them. There might be a way to do it but I've not seen it yet because it's kind of like creating like an overlay on top of the other image. Alright so uh, let's have a look. So we're, I'm just using the brush just to clean things up. Uh, here I read about the healing brush so it could blend so I thought I'd test it out. I really didn't like it it's, I don't know, it was just too random. I was like, no, don't like it. So I kind of quit on that idea. Just use my brush. Uh, just use the round brush for this. You know, I could have used some textured brushes and such, but I just felt like I was more comfortable using the round brush. So I brought up the liquify tool up again. Just give it another try. Testing that you can mask, so you can keep you can retain certain um, content in your in your painting so I'm ma masking in that part so it doesn't stretch testing it see what happens so it just keep that but it doesn't give you a, a clear indication of what is changing so I just gave up on it I might work on it a bit more uh, that tool just to see if there's a way to make it clearer <coughs> so here I'm I'm kind of like b painting in and then painting out you know uh, just to get some clear uh, clean uh, lines so these this is just like little tweaks I'm doing just to get the the values right the, the lines correct cleaning up the, the clothing I think here I was thinking you know should I paint the, the the edges or should I use some kind of selection tool oh I just stopped and started oh there we go part, eh? fair enough yeah I had to pause apparently <laughs> okay so um I forgot what I was doing, so I went to do the shoulder. Uh, yeah, just just refining the the values, the lines. I avoided doing the head because it's just too much detail to do at the beginning. You got to make sure all your shapes are right and that your body is correct in certain places, so that when you're going to do the head. You can just focus on it, you know, you just don't have to worry about anything else. Because your head is the most important part, you don't want to rush it, you know, you want to put the most time into that. So you want the whole picture there first before you start doing the head. So I'm just like, uh, cleaning it up. If you notice on this video I'm not using the gradient tool as much because uh, the gradient tool is okay, it's great, but it's a little bit, um, it's kind of random because it's just spraying colour. It's like using a, a an airbrush, you know. It's really strong. I'm taking a course right now that uses the gradient tool, so I might get better with it and I might use it a lot more. You know, more than just blocking things in. And I, I know I use it a few more times in this video, which is which is good. Uh, 
Uh, I did put some music on this video and upload it, but YouTube hated the fact that I used copyright material. So this is why I'm doing a vo voiceover instead. Uh, plus I think that doing a voiceover might be more beneficial. Yeah, so don't like miss any bits, you know, like the, the clothing on the bit. Because every little bit of this painting works towards the composition. So, say like that little armband, you know, it works towards the value composition to break up the shapes. You know, it creates interest on on the for the painting. The artist that created this would have thought about this when he was creating it. <coughs> so yeah, I just did a little bit of liquefy just to nudge it a little bit. I used the guides just to make sure it was in line. Don't worry about using the tools in the software, you know. It's not cheating. It's a tool, you know. If, if you're doing it traditionally, uh, you've got long sticks, you've got rulers, you know, you, you've got lots of different measuring tools. These are the measuring tools for your software, for your Photoshop. So use your rulers, use your, your guides. Don't worry about it. Even measuring stuff, making sure it's all in place. Don't just eyeball it because... Uh, even, in, even in life drawing, you use your pencil and you, you outstretch your arm and you look and measure it you're using a measuring tool, you're not eyeballing it so try not to eyeball eyeballing is great uh, it gives you uh, it strengthens your observational skills and I highly do recommend doing it on a few paintings but don't do it on every painting because it does slow your workflow down a bit it does slow your, your time down on completing the piece when you're confident in your uh, in your observational skills I, I am okay with it you know I don't get it perfect but I can do it if you can't do observational drawing then I would suggest doing that first just to get used to doing observational drawing and then once you're confident with it you know confident that you can at least attempt to do observational even though it's not accurate then I would start using tools like rulers and such you know to get it even more accurate and to speed up your workflow. So uh, yeah, someone said that I'm really great with brushes. Um, I, 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 my history with painting is more towards traditional. I didn't do that many traditional paintings. I didn't get a master with it or anything close to that. Or even, uh, you know, I was just a student, but I used to paint a lot, you know, uh, with acrylics and oils. And sometimes watercolors. So when I'm painting on this, uh, I generally do the same type of technique. You know, I, I just uh, put paint down. You know, uh, I, I see a lot of professionals how they use a lot of tools like the selection tools and uh, gradients and such, uh, or they do a lot of masking and things. Uh, I learned the hard way. <laughs> So here, yeah, look at this, yeah, so I um, created a pen tool to, to clean up the lines, make sure it's refined. With this painting, I'm not that, uh, I'm not that touchy-feely about it. I don't want it to be perfect, I don't want it to be really, really polished. I can do that because I've done it in the past, I've done it with the Level Up course. Uh, but it, it does take a lot, lot more time to make it perfect, I'm afraid, so if you want it perfect, invest the time that's all I can suggest with this painting what I want to do is get used to the model get used to the lighting setting the composition uh, so that uh, this this is a project that I'm doing where you merge an animal with a masterpiece like this uh, anything like, like at the moment I'm gonna merge a flamingo's head with the body so I wanted to get used to this painting so that when I do that um, you know, I've done my reference, I've done my studying, I understand this painting, you know, I understand the values, I understand where all the shapes are, I understand she's holding the, f the flowers with, with her arms, I understand the shadows, I understand the, the clothing with the stripes, um, I understand her expression because later I, I paint the, the, the face. So when I do the, the flamingo, um, I understand what kind of, um, what, you know, 
where the angle of the head is going to be, where where the eyes are going to look, you know, uh, the atmosphere, etc., etc. Understand the values, uh, the breakup of values, where shadow meets light, you know. So that's what this uh, little project's about. It's about using a reference, studying it, applying it. It's not your normal t kind of master copy where you've got to get it perfect to learn all the um, the brush strokes, the uh, lighting situation, all that. It's, you know, it's not for that. It's for an actual project. This is. If you want me to do one from scratch, um, making it perfect, those will be long videos. Uh, there might be a few of them, but I can do that if it's requested because um, it'll help me as well, you know, I'll, I'll be able to learn from it. Yeah, so here I was like, uh, I thought the arm was too fat, so I thought I'd squish it a little bit. It's By the end of the video, it is still a little bit too chunky, but I'm not going to go back into it because uh, I've finished with it, you know. I might start to do some colour overlays just to get used to the colours in it, because the painting I'm going to be working on is in colour not black and white so I might go back into it just to get used to some of the colours I did try it with colour and overlay um, layers <laughs> but the life of me I just I don't know it just doesn't click I'm so used to doing it traditionally these digital methods even though I've took a course in it with Bobby Chiu uh, it still doesn't quite click, you know, uh, how how I'm supposed to to do it, um, especially with all the little tiny uh, color variations. So I did it. I tried it last night, and it and it looked a bit a, <laughs> a little bit of a mess. It started to look similar to the original painting, but the the face itself was a struggle. Um, so I might have to look into that. Maybe the values on this are slightly off from the values on the masterpiece. That's why it looked a little bit different. You know, that, that's the thing when using overlay and colour uh, blending modes on your layers. It does cause some of that, you know, it does rely on... Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is embarrassing, yeah. Because I always mess with all the techniques in Photoshop, all the tools. Sometimes you do slip up, and here I slipped up by uh, painting on the layer that I wasn't supposed to paint on. Now, this layer was supposed to be just for reference. Oh wait, no, I remember now. I didn't hide the uh, the guides. I didn't hide the the, the grid when I was um, tweaking the arm. So what happened was I, uh, you know, I pasted a picture, uh, a layer with the guide still on and that's why you can see this right now so I'm having to work back into it a little bit this is not good because it slows down your workflow it interrupts your learning process because you're having to clean it up so it's not a good thing to, to do but it is easily done with Photoshop Uh, yeah, if you need help, like with just a quick ruler, not having to use any um, tools in the right or left if it's on the left, um, just get your your brush tool, just uh, make it small, or you know, smallish. Go over to the reference, line it up to what you want to paint. Um, hold down shift and paint across to your painting. Eyeball it. To where it went, and then um, Control Alt Z for undo, and then start painting where 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 you eyeballed it, where you eyeballed where your hand was. That, that's a really quick way to to measure horizontally where it is. You know, it's got limitations. Uh, you know, so it's not as efficient as the ruler tool but the ruler tool does take a little bit more time to use. So, it, and also you don't want it like mathematical, you want, you want it to flow, you want it to feel um, express, expressive, artistic. 
you want to have fun with it. You don't want to just keep using ruler tools and that, you know, to measure everything. What is the point in that? You're basically copying uh, pixel to pixel then. You know, this is a learning, uh, <laughs> this is a learning um, project, so you have to stop using some of the tools. Otherwise, you might as well just uh, copy and paste the, the reference on top of yours and then just trace over it or underneath yours and just, just trace over it you know, you might as well just do that much, much quicker you don't even have to use a ruler tool then but, you know, so, so it is good to use a ruler tool but don't overuse it because you won't be learning from it then yeah, I don't use it that much it's just when I'm really not confident about a line so here I'm uh, there, there we go, create a new layer, you know, I've learnt my mistake. <coughs> so here, when, when I've got to do uh, a lot of details in a small space, and I have to zoom in a little bit, I um, control, shift, alt, and E to create everything on a new layer. Uh, make sure you've got your grid system on the uh, reference piece that you're copying, just because it's easier to measure and uh, and also uh, let's have a look and then just uh, zoom in Dra drag your reference over to the place you want to paint so that in this case it's the head zoom in and then you can start to paint it in so to begin with I uh, didn't worry about placement so much I just wanted to see something I'm a visual person so I want to see what the outcome is going to be so here I just, just winged it in a way I just used the the um, brush tool just to do a quick measurement of where it's going to be I did do a lot of clean up later on on where the shapes were so I've learnt from this particular study that maybe don't wing it as much as you know don't don't just wing it when it's an important place to paint like the head you know the the, the face maybe use the ruler tool a little bit more just to know where all the shapes are uh, later on you'll see me use a technique with the ruler tool where you can measure it all I can't really explain it right now because it's you know, I'll just explain it when it comes along. So at the moment I'm doing the, the necklace. I'm not going to make it perfect because it's just a quick study. Uh, if I was going to make it perfect I would have probably done the dark first for the shadows and then put the lights on top uh, to make to bring it out. And I would have zoomed right in to, to make all the details once the uh, blocking process was kind of perfect so what am I doing here I'm uh, I have no idea <laughs> just get on with it <laughs> alright so I'm drawing the ear make sure the ear is the correct shape so I use that technique quite a lot you know to drag across because it doesn't really slow down your process there yeah, I did it for the highlight it's just a really quick swipe just to eyeball it get to know where it is it's the exact same so you think it's cheered it's the exact same as using your arm a pencil and a, and a model you know doing life drawing stick your arm out with a pencil and, and use your thumb to measure the, the distance it's the exact same way basically you know <coughs> so I'd swipe it across there's no slow down I'm just trying to refine the, refine the the chin a little bit uh, here I've re the, right here I realized I needed those lines see them lines to, that makes the box I needed those lines to to do to use the measuring tool to you know to help with the measuring It, underst it, make it helps you understand uh, the distance in the blocks, in the boxes. 
this guy, this grid is just another um, guide, another helpful guide, you know, for when painting. Uh, Masters did it, like Rembrandt. I saw a, a photograph of, or, or like, a, I don't know if I don't know if they did photography back then. Um, I think they did, like really old black and whites. Uh, they were like a photo or something or a, a, a drawing. It was him. Uh, it was him. Uh, well, it was a pr apprentice actually. Uh, the, the, I think it was the apprentice, so it was him. And there was the model, the the scene, and then what was it now? It was a. Uh, then there was a frame with with string going down uh, and then going across to make the grid and then there was the, the canvas and the painter so the grid was in front of the painter a little bit like a a, a viewfinder and he used that to to, get, to help guide him he, he used the grid system he used a really old traditional archaic grid system very similar to what I'm using here once I saw that, I wasn't afraid of using it. I wasn't paranoid of being a cheater. Because Rembrandt did it, you know? You see Rembrandt's uh, paintings, and he used a grid system. He, he cheated. You know? So I'm going to cheat. If, if that's what you consider it what it is, you know? I don't think it's cheating. So yeah, yeah. Look, See how to use the ruler? I measured it. Uh, so you use the whole box to measure. So this time I'm using the right side of the box to try and get the eye perfect. It's still not perfect when I paint, you know, when I when I've finished it, I have to readjust it. So it goes to show, you know, um, you can't get it perfect because we're only human. Except for if you're like... I don't know, that. when I see some um, let's, let's paints from other artists, like professionals, and they do like a life drawing painting, you you can see what they're painting but you see it in a different way because you're not focused on it so you see all the mistakes they're making so you see the, the life model and you see the painting and you see how different they are that they're very very different um, and you know so even the really great professionals that do fantastic paintings you, I don't think even they can get it absolute perfect you know their paintings are not 100% accurate either. So, you know, uh, they might paint really great fantasy, and, and once they finish the painting, it looks great, but accuracy wise, probably not that accurate. You know, it's not a f photograph of the painting. So, you know, it, it, when I'm looking at it right now with, with clear eyes, I think the eye is too squished. But I do fix that, so don't worry. Unless I don't, and that was the fix. <laughs> but I'm not going to work back into it, because it's finished. Kind of. So yeah, I've just uh, measured from the other side. Uh, the other s So, uh, just to make sure that it's the right length. Also, because of the way the ruler works, uh, it also, if you use the hold down the shift key when you drag it across from from the reference to your painting, it retains the vertical uh, alignment, which means that you don't have to measure up and down. You only need to measure sideways. Just to let you know, it's a really useful tool. I'm glad I'm starting to use it. I don't I don't normally use it. This is the first time I've used it in this painting. I don't know what's wrong with me with this painting. <laughs> I'm using all these new tools and recording it. Why not just record what I'm used to? <laughs> but uh, you know, it seems to be working out quite well. I guess I want to show my little sh little new tricks I've learned, and I haven't learned that from like. Anyone really? I, I think a lot of people use it. Maybe I've learnt it subconsciously when watching videos, but I haven't seen people use these ruler tools and that in in such a way. Actually, I don't think I've seen them use these ruler tools. You know, like the ruler. Uh, 
so yeah, just uh, trying to tweak it because I know I, I know it's a little bit wrong. It's looking more perfect now. Uh, ah, there we go. That's a new trick. Uh, I don't know if that is cheating because that is kind of <laughs> that one just goes over the board uh, over the line. I think. I, I think. Uh, even personally, I think that might be a little bit cheating. You know, I didn't copy any of the pixels, but I did kind of lay it across the reference to get the right size. So, I don't know. Might, I, I don't know. It, it, if you think about it in one way, if you got the ruler tool, measured it, measured it across perfectly, and then sent it to your reference, it'll probably get the same result. So, I think it's fine, you know. You can't do that when you're doing your own paintings, so you know it's not. It's only a technique you can use to learn master copies. So block in yours, do the details, so you got your details. So you're not, you know, cheating, cheating. <laughs> and then uh, drag, it, you know, make a new layer with it. Drag it across. See if it's the right size. Uh, if it's not, just transform it make it bigger a little bit and drag it back across where it was paint it in you know jobs are good on you know you've got it I don't know it, it it's a technique I've not really used and uh, just watching it then kind of I just don't see I could use it in my personal paintings unless I had some reference that I'd do perfect comp yeah, but like it was just exactly what I wanted. Yeah, you know, speed's speed's king, end of the day. You know, a lot of artists they they, they use photographs, you know, they bring in photographs you know, for their own pieces. And they paint photographs into the work. A lot of concept artists do that these days. A lot of concept artists use three D programs to create characters, is that cheating? You know, creating creating it three D so you don't have to render it in three D, is that cheating? So, it's just tools, you know. What's important is the, the end result and what you've learnt from it. So I'm doing the mouth right now. I am using the ruler tool a little bit more because with the eye, I learned that I'll, it, it helped. You know, if 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 you f feel something helps, don't be afraid to use it again. Yeah, sometimes rendering can be a bit boring to watch. Um, I don't know, maybe you like this because I, I've I've been through it, so I'm, that's probably why I'm feeling like mm, it's dragging along a little bit. But because uh, <coughs> there's not much to talk about, <laughs> it's just rendering. Uh, uh, yeah, just refining the eye because it's not finished yet. I noticed that it was too small, so I'm starting to enlarge it a little bit with the lights. Putting a little bit of highlights in just to bring it out. Um, I actually do really like that right eye now, or uh, left eye, whichever. You, I don't know. I always get confused with that. You know, am I the paint? Am I the painter looking at the painting, or am I the model looking out of the eyes? <laughs> yeah. So the the finished eye, I kind of like it. It looks almost, almost, you know, the same. I think if I was doing a perfect polished picture, which can take like 20 to 30 hours, I would zoom right in and get brush stroke to brush stroke. You know, I get perfect. It's a good lesson. I've done it again. I've done it before. You know, it took forever, 30 hours, but it looked almost perfect. It showed me that you've got to complete paintings. You know. If you do that, you'll probably start. Co if you don't, if you have, if you don't ever finish work, work on a master copy and try to make it as perfect as possible. Um, if you get impatient, you don't want to do it anymore. Just take a few days off and then go back to it with fresh eyes, because it'll help as well. That, and then just work on it some more. It's a very, uh, you know, y your patience can strain on it. I was towards the end, I was wanting to hang myself, but. The outcome was so brilliant. You know, it was almost identical in in a lot of ways. 
So here I'm just drawing the eyes in, uh, sorry, eyes, uh, nose in. Uh, so I'm just uh, drawing the nostrils. This nose is quite interesting because when I do my personal drawings, for some reason I always have to draw the other nostril on the other side of the nose just to show that it's a natural nose, you know, it's it's got two nostrils. But this painting doesn't have it and yet it still works, so I've got to think about that when I'm doing my noses. Noses for me, I don't know, I just can't do them right, you know, I always either do them too big or I just don't do a nose and I do some kind of weird thing that, you know, because I do weird creatures sometimes. But uh, my noses tend to be a little bit, bit bad, so I need to work on that. My hands also sometimes look a little bit bad, so I might need to work on that. Uh, they're okay, you know, I quite like some of my hands I do, but I need to work on the hands. I'm quite good with eyes, you know, because I did learn that, you know, the, the soul to the person, so you got to get it perfect. So I do work on the eyes. Uh, I've worked on them and now I'm okay with painting eyes. But I do need to improve noses, so I might do a few portrait studies of different people with different noses. <laughs> I'm alright with lips, but I think I could improve a bit more just to make them more natural looking. So they're just stuck on. <coughs> To be honest with you, you're studying for life, to be honest. You know, the the bet I've noticed that the better you get at painting, or at least with the theory, not the execution, but the theory, the better you get, the b more knowledge you get. With, you know, I've got quite a lot because I've got a lot of uh, education now. So the, b the more knowledge you have in, in art and, and in uh, picture making, you notice that a lot of these professionals, especially the newer, newer uh, professionals, they have a lot of mistakes in their work, and I bet you anything that they notice those mistakes, and so what that what that means is that they're just like uh, people who are learning, they to see the mistakes that they're making and they want to improve it. And I think most professionals have at least some mistakes in the paintings. You know, whether it's the rendering's too boring, or the colours have not quite synced up properly, or the composition's slightly off. Okay, so here I've noticed that the, the neck and the, the chin are, are off, basically. Now this means, doing this, means I've got to fix the shoulders, because as you can see, it's right out the shoulder now so it means more work basically so if you if it has to be fixed it has to be fixed don't procrastinate and don't like think oh I can't be bothered to do that I'll just leave it don't do that because it's just making you it's just hurting your work it's just hurting your paintings if you're gonna do the extra work the extra mile just do it because then your paintings It'll, it'll look better, and it'll show, you know. So it, that there, I'd fixed it. You know, I'd sometimes you get if you if you're rendering a, a a little bit for so long, you get attached to it. You know, you're like, oh, I don't want to do that again. It spent so many hours on it. Blah blah blah. You know, there's no rush to finishing a painting. I keep saying this because I've learned it, you know. I've learned that there's no rush to finishing a painting. I used to always try to rush to finish my paintings and it always hurt the outcome because it looked rushed. Now I think, you know, um I've got I don't know, sixty years to finish it, you know, until I die. <laughs> so <laughs> I know it's like it's like a a very excessive way to say it, uh, I don't, I don't know, exaggerated way to say it, but you do have time to finish your painting. 
So don't don't worry about how long it's going to take you to finish it. You can also go back to it later. So here I've done that same technique where you stretch it and stuff and bring it across. And that's the result. So it was too small. I think that's fine. You know, it's uh, similar to like you know when you when you're drawing with pencils and pens, you use tracing paper to to redraw pictures to get them better and better and better. I would say it's the same as that. You know, you just overlaying the painting you've done on top of the reference, making sure the lines are right. Because you don't see me kind of using the stamp tool to to stamp in the 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 mouth from the reference here, so. I'm not like getting the reference perfect. I still think that mouth is wrong. I think it's still too small. It's too squished. You know, like horizontally. So it, the video is nearly finished. Uh, a minute ago. So it's not finished. This painting by a long shot. It's finished based on what I needed it for. So I'm just fixing the shoulder quickly, a little bit. You know, because I want to finish this painting. Uh, I think because I fixed the uh, the shoulder, uh, blah, the uh, shoulder, the the neck, I fixed all that. So I hope this video has been very useful for you. Um, you know, I'll I'll do some more because I think it's in it's learning me. You know, watching my paintings again in real time. Well, not real time, but recorded. <laughs> uh, it's really helping me understand my own work and where I make the mistakes rather than just looking at a painting once it's finished. It's really interesting watching the process. So this is the final piece. Thank you for watching.